Have you ever wondered where the files you share in Teams chats and channels are actually stored, and how to find them again? For those of us who learned how to use a computer before the cloud era, the concept of sharing files in the cloud can be a little confusing. You might be used to knowing exactly where your files are stored, for example in the My Documents folder on your PC, or on a network share. So today I'm going to demystify where Teams stores your files so it doesn't feel like they're lost in space. Russell here, Editorial Director of Petri.com in This Life and IT Consultant in a previous one. I recently got a question from a viewer, George from Alabama, about where Microsoft Teams stores files. So George asks, Whoops, wrong button. When I share files in Microsoft Teams, I'd like to know where they're actually stored. That seems like a fair question, so let's take a look at the different ways of sharing files in Teams and then where they actually end up being stored. So here I am in Teams in a one-to-one -one chat with Argo, and I'd like to share a file from my local computer. Now the easiest way to do that is probably just to drag and drop from File Explorer. So I want to share this Get It Conference example ebook, so all I need to do is just drag it across into Teams, drop it into the chat box, and you can see it appears to be uploading the file to Teams. So all I need to do now is send that message to Argo, and he's got access to the file. The other way you can do this is to use the attachment icon at the bottom of a new message. So I'm going to click on it and you see here that I've got two options. So I can either upload a file from my computer or upload a file from the cloud. So for instance, if I click here on OneDrive, you see here that I can choose a file. Maybe I want to show Argo's kibble orders. So all I need to do is select it and then click share and then just send it as a new message. So you can see two different things happened here. When I shared the file from my local computer, it looked like Teams was uploading it to the cloud. But when I shared the file from OneDrive, you didn't get that upload in progress bar because these files were shared in slightly different ways. So let me explain. So whenever you're in a one-to-one -one chat or a group chat, it doesn't matter. Any files that you share from your local computer are stored in your own personal OneDrive for business. Now we can see that and prove that's the case quite easily. So if I come over to my OneDrive for Business, you'll see that there's a folder called Microsoft Teams Chat Files. So if I click on that and open it, you can see the file that I just shared with Argo from my local computer. And that has sharing configured so that Argo can access it. Now the other file that I shared with Argo was already in my OneDrive. So because I shared it using the attach icon and just selected it from OneDrive, Teams just modifies the sharing that's already on that file in the cloud so that Argo or whoever else is in that chat can access it. And you can see here that now this file, which wasn't previously shared, is now shared. And you can even go in here and click on Manage Access. And you can see here that anybody with the link can access this file. And that's how Teams shares files by default. And at any time, you can come into this dialog and revoke that access. So while guest users don't have the ability to upload files themselves to a Teams chat, but if you want to share files with an external guest user, you can do that by just uploading the file that you want to share to the Teams chat. So let's come back to Teams and see how this works in a Teams channel. So I come over to Teams here, uh, we're in the general channel for Argo's dog food, and all you need to do is create a new conversation, and basically this works exactly the same as in a chat in terms of sharing the file. So you can upload the file from the local computer or share a file from your OneDrive, for instance, by clicking on the attachment icon down here. And you've got an extra option where you can actually browse files that are already in your Teams and channels. So let's say I want to share that file again. So I'm going to share Argo's kibble order. So I'm just going to select it. And I've got two options here. I can either upload a copy to this Teams channel or share a link. So let's do it both ways and just see how that works. So I'm going to upload a copy. And you can see you get the upload progress bar there. And I'm just going to send that. And I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to start a new conversation. But this time I'm going to select this file and I'm going to say share a link. And I'm just going to send that message. 
So when we upload a copy to the Teams channel, where does it actually go? So you can come here to the Files tab and you can see that that file has now been uploaded. So what is this exactly? This is basically a SharePoint folder. So if you go open in SharePoint, you'll actually see the SharePoint folder and have access to that file. So in a similar way, the file where we shared a link, it's not uploaded to the SharePoint folder, but the permissions on the original file are just changed so that people in this team can get access to the file. So if we come back over to my OneDrive and we have a look at the access on Argo's Kibble orders, you can see basically the same link has been used to give users in the team access. So once you've shared files, how do you find them? The quickest way, if you know they've been shared in a particular Teams channel or chat, is just to use the Files tab in Teams, and you will see all of the files that have been shared with that channel or in that particular chat. If we come back to chat here, go back to Argos chat there, and you can see that we have all of those files there. Another way to search for files is to come to the Office homepage and you can get a quick list of all the files that either you have shared or that other people have shared with you by clicking on the shared filter. Now one of the great things about this is that you can add your own filters. So if there's somebody that shares files with you on a regular basis, maybe your boss for instance, in my case Argo, I can set up a new content filter here and I can say that I want to see files that are just shared by Argo. So I put Argo there, Argo Smith, and you can see just the files that he has shared with me. And of course, another way to quickly find files is just to use the search box. So I can type here vids. If I click return there, you can see that it's brought up this video that Argo shared with me in December. And there he goes. So it's pretty easy to locate your files, you know, even if you're not quite sure what the file name is, but maybe you know who it was shared by or what kind of file it was, or whether it was stored locally or as an email attachment or in the cloud, then it helps you to narrow down finding that particular file that you're looking for. If you're signing into Windows 10 or Windows 11 with your Microsoft Work or School account, or you've got your Microsoft Work or School account registered with Windows, then you can also use the search in Windows to find your files that are located in OneDrive or somewhere within your Microsoft 365 tenant. So it might not be immediately obvious where your shared files are actually stored, but it shouldn't matter. At least that's the way Microsoft has designed this experience. And I think that's intentional. So while most of you watching this video are of course technical and you want to be in control and know what's going on in the background, the average computer user, if there is such a thing, doesn't really understand where they're saving the files or how to find them again without using search. And I can back that up with my own experience. For instance, ask my mum where she saved a file and you'll just get a blank expression in return. I also remember asking people in my office when I was working in IT, you know, where, where do you store your files? And you just get kind of, well, we don't know. And when I was teaching HTML, one of the prerequisites for the course was that you should understand the file and folder structure on a computer system. Because you need to understand files and folders and how they're structured before you can start uploading a website to a web server using FTP. But I remember so many of the students didn't really understand where their files were stored or how they were structured. And that's a problem because it's really important to maintain the local file structure on the web server and understand why that's important because otherwise your website's not gonna work. So you can use Teams without ever seeing the actual files in OneDrive or SharePoint. But if you're like me and you just want to know where the files are actually stored for peace of mind, or you'd like to access them maybe because you want to share or revoke the sharing permissions on them, then those files are accessible in OneDrive for Business and in the SharePoint folders. So anyway, I hope that answers your question, George. And if you like this video and found it useful, then please hit the like button and subscribe if you'd like to see more of this kind of content from Petri every week. But before you go, I'd like you to check out the video that I've put on the screen now about the top five new features in Microsoft Teams that were made generally available last month. But that's it from me today and I'll see you next time.